my friend. Welcome to the study. Today we're going to visit a map of the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Bath, or as we know from our Roman map, Aquae Sulis. This leaflet was put out by the Nelson Society and the Bath Preservation Trust. And there are some websites here listed for the tourist or historian interested in more information. Bath World Heritage, Nelson Society, UNESCO. World Heritage Center, Bath and Northeast Somerset Council, and Bath Preservation Trust. And here you can see a fancy ball in the upper rooms, painted by Robert Isaac. shows you the society that was established at Bath in the 18th and early 19th century. So we'll be looking at not normal Bath, but Nelson's Bath. sounds. Map locations. And hopefully some relaxing sounds. And I will also be making a nod to a few of my favorite ASM artists by using this stylus probably a letter opener, but you can see it, uh, it's very interesting. It's got some figures on it, and some faces, and little bits of design. I think it's made out of silver because it tarnishes frequently. I found it among the things of a family member who lived in uh, Guayaquil, Ecuador. So it's possibly South American. I like the way it looks. It's very mysterious and um, ancient looking. It evokes that anyway. So I was going to use that as a stylus on the paper to make some nice noises. Um, this has been done by several ASM artists, notably for me, Nathan ASMR, and I'll put the link there, and Contour des Légendes. So, I'm going to try their stylus on paper sounds and take you on a tour of the Nelson Trail in Bath. So, lie back. Yards in Portsmouth, and there's 
Cruises, flagship for the Battle of Trafalgar, the victory, HMS victory, still in active service for the historic dockyards. or Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson was first Viscount Nelson and first Duke of Bronte and held the Order of Knight of the Bath He is greatest naval commanders in history, having showed extreme inspirational leadership, a firm grasp of strategy, as well as unconventional, bold tactics, and is responsible for a number of decisive British naval victories during the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. Born in 1758 into a middle class family in Norfolk, his uncle was also 
So carried out diplomatic duties between Britain and the states of Italy. In 1797, he distinguished himself in the Battle of Cape St. Vincent while in command of HMS. Santa Cruz de Tenerife, he lost his right arm. It was then he returned to England to convalesce, and the following year was the year he won the decisive victory of Napoleon in the Battle of the Nile. he moved to support the Kingdom of Naples against the French invasion. Nelson defeated the Dutch fleet in the Battle of Copenhagen. He then commanded the famous blockade of the combined French and Spanish fleet at Toulon, taking his fleet on a grand chase to the West Indies and back. When they escaped in a storm, over the Cadiz blockade, and on the 21st of October, 1805, the Franco-Spanish fleet came out of port, and Nelson's fleet engaged in the Battle of Trafalgar. naval victories, but Nelson aboard HMS 
Paris victory, was fatally wounded by a French musket ball. His body brought back to England, where his remains made their way by grand barge from Greenwich and finally to St. Paul's, where he was given a state funeral and interred in an elaborate tomb once intended for Henry VIII, but never finished. He was deeply mourned, and remains one of Britain's, if not Europe's, most heroic figures. His personality has sometimes been described as a combination of things that no other man seems to possess, called the Nelson Touch. He was an extremely effective leader, almost instinctively and compassionately understanding the needs of his men. Instilling respect for his own authority through admiration of his qualities. He was courageous, had a deeply committed sense of duty. He was also passionate and vain, and not immune to acting with harsh and even questionable authority, as he did with reprisals in Naples. Colin White writes for the Nelson Society that many other admirals have been as brave as Nelson. Some have been loved as much by their men. Few have been inspiring leaders but only he has combined all these qualities in one frail and unheroic body. As his great friend and mentor, Lord St. Vincent, once said, all agree there is but one Nelson. After his elaborate funeral, during which was famously played Endel's death march from his oratorio Saul, which I must add, even if I digress, is a very, very moving piece, and even Leopold Stokowski's arrangement with the haunting timpani and super soft strings stays in one's mind. Numerous monuments were erected in memorial of Nelson and in London alone. There were several, namely Nelson's column in Trafalgar Square and a section in Greenwich in the National Maritime Museum. Let's have a look at his uniform here before we delve into Bath. This painting shows Nelson's decorations in 1805 just before Trafalgar. It has the turned down color corresponding to Royal Navy regulations of 1795 until 1812 with a pair of matched epaulettes with the two stars distinguishing a 
the Vice Admiral. As Nelson had lost his right arm, the right sleeve of the jacket was only lined to the elbow and at a loop that the words are covering a little bit of, with a ribbon here, so that the sleeve could be crossed over the double-breasted buttons. His decorations show the diamond chilling Sultan of Turkey, the insignia of some chivalric orders. Nelson liked to wear these, and they were embroidered onto all of his jackets. This one is the Order of the Bath, begun by King George the First in the early. 18th century um, has nothing to do with Bath, the World Heritage site, <laughs> but it has to do with the initiation of the Order of Knights, legendary initiation, as being bathed. This one he received for his victory over the Spanish flotilla at Cape St. Vincent in February 1797. This one is the Ottoman Order of the Crescent, instituted especially by the Sultan Selim III to honor the victor of Abu Kir. This one is the Order of St. Ferdinand, the Order of Merit, created in 1800 by the King of Naples, whom uh, Nelson supported during the war against France in 1798, and where he met. herself a most remarkable woman. And here we have three miniatures. Admiral Lord Nelson is our country's greatest ever naval hero, who gave his life when commanding the British Navy fleet in defeating the combined French and Spanish fleet. Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. King George III was on the throne of Great Britain in 1781, when the 22-year-old Captain Horatio Nelson first came to Bath to recover from a bout of fever on the advice of his father, Edmund, who was himself a regular visitor. Nelson was to return on many other occasions over the next 18 years. At that time, Bath was one of the largest English cities, with a resident population of around 30,000. The city constantly played host to the cream of society, including naval officers on leave or in retirement fine architecture, balls, parties, gambling, luxury shopping, and recitals were on offer to the fashionable visitors, as well as the famously curative mineral waters. Almost everyone had heard of the famous but mystical healing properties of Bath's thermal spring waters, and Nelson believed the story simplicity. According to the Bath Journal of 22nd of January, 1781, proclaimed Nelson's arrival in the town in its customary roll call of visiting dignitaries. Here 
ascends into the countryside to crisscross the Kennet River. We come to Bathhampton, where Captain Philip was buried, a gentleman of Bath and first governor of Australia, as well as commander of the first fleet to arrive there for settlement. guest in 1798. 
having the use of Palmer's private box. And number three, as we move up towards the Roman baths, is the Crystal Palace public house, or pub. This occupies the site of number 10 and number 11, Abbey Green, where Nelson and his wife Frances, known as Fanny, lodged during his last visit in 1798. On the opposite side of the green is number 1, home of Admiral Samuel Barrington, a close friend of both Nelson and his wife from their time in the West Indies. Horatio and Fanny would have known the same London plane tree still occupying the middle of the green. There are some cute shops and cafes there as well. And it's just down the road from Sally Lund's famous coffee house with bath buns that are bigger than your head. Then we come up just past the Roman baths to the beautiful Gothic Cathedral, Bath Abbey, the Abbey Church of St. Peter and St. Paul. Bath commonly known as Bath Abbey. It is now an Anglican parish church and a former Benedictine monastery. The west front has huge entrance doors. And Jacob's Ladders going up and down from heaven. This abbey has been rebuilt twice. First, since it was the site of the coronation of Edgar, a Saxon king who reigned from 975 to 959 as king of England. He was the first monarch to be crowned as king the abbey also houses a large number of memorial plaques, some dedicated to many of Nelson's colleagues, both naval and civilian. Next, we come to the pump room, a beautiful building built adjacent to the Roman baths often frequented by Edmund Nelson during the winter season as part of his annual recuperation. Almost everyone in society came at some time to drink the bath waters to bathe in the adjoining king's bath. There was a bad mineral or algae or fungus or something in the water which made it unusable for the most part of the 20th century. And in the 21st century, a new borehole was dug over here, and you can now go in and enjoy the bath spring water that comes up at something like 36, 38 degrees Celsius from the ground after thousands of years under the island. Drinking and bathing was all part of the bath cure that had survived 
society that came from London to regenerate, recuperate, and socialize. Next, the trail takes us around St. John's Hospital to Beaufort Square. This is where handbells were rung and speeches made on the day of Nelson's funeral. Then the trail takes us here to number 22 Charles Street. Nelson's father and sister Susanna moved here briefly. 1797 to make more room in number 17 New King Street for Nelson's return to Bath to be reunited with his wife after four years at sea. During that time he had lost the sight of the right eye in Calvi Tenerife Corsica his actions at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent, where he suffered the loss of his right arm at Santa Cruz in Tenerife. And next we come to the Herschel Museum of Astronomy on New King Street. Nelson and Fanny shared in ten years of marriage, which they rented from 1794 to 1797. Fanny later stayed at number 10 after Nelson's death at Trafalgar in 1805. Number 19, New King Street was the home of Sir William Herschel, appointed the King's Astronomer in 1782, also a composer and musician. The planet Uranus was discovered from this very back garden. Now the Herschel Museum of Astronomy trail returns to Charles Street and goes up Chapel Row. Here is the chapel of St. Mary, now demolished. It was a private chapel built in 1735 by the famous architect John Wood the Elder. It was this chapel's weather vane to which Nelson directed Fanny to determine if he had yet sailed as departure would usually be delayed by southwesterly winds. Going along Chapel Row and up past Queen Square. Queen Square is Admiral Viscount Samuel Hood, Nelson's commander in the West Indies and in the Mediterranean, and his wife launched at number five. Hood entertained Fanny Nelson here and introduced her to Nelson's colleagues in number 14 Queen Square. Surgeon Nichols lived and here it was he dressed Nelson's arm after it was amputated in 1797. Nichols was surgeon to Bath General Hospital and also attended Nelson. 
awesome sister Anne at numbers 16 and 18 Queen Square is about the Royal Literary and Scientific Institution. Its extensive museum collection holds a small file of the alcohol used to preserve Nelson's body on its return to England after his death at the Battle of Trafalgar. Within the Elwyn room are four ceiling paintings of classical gods by Andrea Casale, originally in the dining room of William Beckford's Mont Hill Abbey in Wiltshire, where Nelson and the Hamiltons were entertained in 1800. At number 23 Queen Square, Admiral Sir William Harcourt who had known Nelson from his time as a midshipman when Nelson was third lieutenant in the Bristol in 1778, attended his wedding and escorted his body home after Trafalgar. Then we come to Gay Street. At number two Gay Street, Admiral Sir Edward Berry was lieutenant on board Nelson's ship at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent. Nelson's flight captain on the vanguard at the Battle of the Nile and captain of Agamemnon at the Battle of Trafalgar. Personal friend to both Nelson and Fanny, Barry died here at number two in 1831 and is buried nearby at St. Swithin's Walcott. At number eight, Francis Woodward treated Nelson in Bath when he was invalided from Nicaragua in 1781. His portrait can be seen in the Guild Hall. At number 14 Gay Street, Admiral Sir George Bridges Rodney stayed after his famous victory at the Battle of the Scent in the Caribbean. At number 15, Joseph Haydn who wrote Nelson's Mass, stayed, whilst visiting the maestro of Bath, Renanzio Razzini, the director of concerts at the new assembly rooms. And at number 27 Gay Street, Dr. William Falconer lodged before moving to number 29 on the circus. At number 34, Elizabeth Viget Le Brun, a French portrait by Marie Antoinette met Nelson and the Hamiltons in Naples. She painted Emma Hamilton, who scandalously became Nelson's mistress, as Bacante, which Nelson later owned. Sir William Hamilton initially gave Nelson an enamel miniature of the painting as a token of their friendship. Then we come to the circus, formerly known as the King's Circus. At number 15, Admiral Sir Richard R.C. Bickerton, a friend of Nelson from the West Indies, lived. He was second in command to Nelson in the Mediterranean in 1803, and his wife was a close friend of Fanny. At number 28, Admiral James Richard Dack in Barbleau. St. Vincent, 1797, lived, and who lived at number 29, but Dr. William Falconer, physician at Bath Memorial Hospital and founder of the Bath and West Agricultural Society, responsible for planting the London plane trees on Circus Green. Nelson's wife, Fanny, and his father, Edmund, were lodging in 1797 when news was announced of Nelson's exploits at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent. Subsequently, the rowdy crowd outside was asked to pipe down as Nelson's father was trying to sleep. Fanny also lodged here in 1810 and around the corner in 1910. 
number 8 Russell Street in 1810 and 1815. At number 19 lived Admiral Arthur Philip, first governor of Australia, who is buried at Bathampton. There is an armillary spear, sundial memorial, in the assembly room's garden, visible from the adjacent Savile Row, so named after London Savile Row. Next to the trail leads to the assembly rooms, designed by John Wood the Younger in 1769, and opened in 1771 to become the hub of fashionable society. It was used for many musical events, balls, gaming, and soirees, attended by Fanny and many naval officers when visiting Bath. In 1799, the maestro of Bath, Venanzio Rozzini, presented the grand battle piece commemorating Nelson's victory at the Battle of the Nile. 1,300 people attended. Nelson's sister Anne, aged 23, after attending a ball there, caught a chill and died two weeks later. She is buried at St. Swithin's Church, Bathford. Today, the nine great 18th century chandeliers are still hanging assembly rooms that house the famous fashion museum. Next we come to the Bladded Buildings. Number six are the consulting rooms of Dr. William Falconer. Nelson consulted Falconer in 1797 for treatment of complications following the amputation of his arm. As a mark of his appreciation and friendship, Nelson gave Dr. Falconer an engraved print of his full-length portrait, painted in 1797 by Lemuel Abbott, which is the one we looked at with the decorations. Next is Milsom Street, where at number 16 lived Admiral Vicant, Samuel Hood and Lady Hood. 1795. Sir William Herschel, the astronomer and musician, was the organist here. The trail then leads to the Guild Hall, where, following his success at the Battle of Cape St. Vincent, Nelson was given the freedom of the city of Bath. Today, the Guild Hall houses some of Nelson's memorabilia including a marble bust by the Austrian sculptors Thaler and Ranson, and a portrait of Dr. Woodward, Nelson's doctor. The adjoining Victoria Art Gallery has Nelson-related pictures and sculptures, which can be seen on request. sound. 